All right, here's the last lesson for this unit. <clears throat> um, yes, this is part of the quiz that's on Wednesday and Thursday, um, but it's really just, okay, now that we've learned how to use the calculator for all this stuff, let's actually use it to do some problems that are, that are kind of real life. Okay, it says solve the following al uh, problems algebraically or graphically. Um, we don't require much in terms of graph showing on the quiz, but it's nice to know how to do it, actually. It's, it's, it's going to be helpful to actually figure some things out. So <clears throat> I'm going to show both ways here for most of the stuff. But honestly, if you're okay with just doing things graphically, you should be fine. Okay, um, a homeowner has just enough money to purchase 87.5 feet of fencing. This is a very typical kind of problem. So there's a lot of optimization here going on. Um, and some are about borders and some are about fences. So sometimes, like if you want to look at Khan Academy or somewhere else for this, look up fence and border problems. Uh, I'll just write that here. Very typical of this kind of thing, and we're maximizing area usually. Uh, the other kind of thing we'll maximize might be height, or sorry, profit. Uh, all right, a uh, homeowner has just enough money to buy 87 point feet of the fencing, so that means like all these lengths have to add up to 87.5. Uh, wants to use this material to enclose a rectangular garden. Uh, the homeowner plans to use the back of the house. So you imagine this is the back of the house, so we don't have to actually put fence here. We're only gonna put fence on these three sides. Um, the homeowner, yeah, okay. If X represents the width of the garden, let's use that for the smaller dimension. We'll say that represents width. Uh, we'll label everything else. Well, we know that the total has to be 87.5, so let's build that in. This is going to be the rest. This is a very typical way to do this. So now I know that those three things are limited at a sum of 87.5. Write an equation for the area. Well, you know area. It's base times height. I'm actually not going to require that here, the base times height formula, because it's just that easy. Um, but those are the dimensions of the garden. And what is the maximum possible area of this garden? Okay, I'm on the iPad, so I can't show you the what I'm doing on the um, what I'm doing on the graphing calculator. But if I was to graph this, oh, maybe I should call it a of x. Just a second. Yeah, and just uh, maximize that. I could make a graph of that. If I was to show you the graph of this, it would look. And you could do this on your calculator. <clears throat> you should be good at this by now. Uh, that's probably a pretty good window to show this graph in. This is at 43.7. You don't have to know this, but I'm just, just in case you wanted to check, that's totally not required. This, of course, you probably could have figured out is going to be zero, zero. Um, what is the maximum possible error of the garden? What I'm, what I'm, of course, interested in is going to be that. So from my calculator, when I use the vertex, or sorry, the maximum function, menu six, whatever that is, I see this coordinate has, or this vertex has a coordinate, this maximum value has a coordinate to three decimals of this. The question is, what's the maximum possible area? That's the 957, because remember y is the area here. And this is in square feet. And I believe there's one more question. What are the dimensions? Well, x has to be, x has to be the 21.875. So the dimensions, if you look back at this picture and what the dimensions are, uh, the width is 21.875, but then the other one is 87.5 minus that. So let me figure that out really quickly. 87.5 minus 2 times 21.875. I'm a what? Sorry, I was doing something wrong. Just a second. That's better. And I get 43.75. And these are both feet. Okay. Uh, homeowner decides it's better to put it out in the middle of the middle of the yard. So now the, I am going to have to use all four sides of this thing. Um, and so <clears throat> we got to figure out what these, what these dimensions are. One way to think about this, now that we've got four to think about, and I'm like, okay, what the heck am I going to put in those two things? Uh, you can think of like half this perimeter or just like just, plus, just length plus width has to add up to half of the total fence, 87.5 divided by 2, and that is uh, 43.75. Oh, that's a number I recognize. So, I, whoops, so I know this is going to be, oh, this erasing takes forever. Oh, I don't, I can't just select it and it goes away. So this ends up being 43.75 minus X on both of these to get that whole, all four sides to add up to 87.5. Uh, oh, and make a, make an equation for area. Area based on X is X times 43.75 minus X. What was the maximum possible area? Again, I go to my calculator and I get this thing. Um, Honestly, if you didn't want to use a calculator, you could kind of visualize this by now. Like, I know that one's going to be there. So this is, this is technically in root form, right? This is going to be 43.75. You can tell pretty quickly what the axis of symmetry has to be from, from what you know from 
from algebra. In fact, I'm just going to do this one this way. This one has to be 21.875, also a number I recognize. But now that's the x. So the dimensions of the thing are going to be 21.875 by 43.75 minus 21.875, which is 21.875. And so if I find that area, I get 478.875. Five one six square feet, and that would be the coordinates up here. <clears throat> this would be the four seventy eight. Oh, what are the dimensions? Oh, I already got that. Twenty one point. I mean, the geometry people among you may have already realized that this is going to be a square. They're not always squares. Like the one on the last page wasn't a square because we had that weird thing with the, the the one side was not made out of fence. Uh, then oh, okay, this is a little more interesting. This was the four seventy eight point something. The next question is, okay, at what dimensions do we get 300 feet? I am going to go to the graphing calculator for this, and I'm going to graph this. Actually, well, we could do this algebraically, too. Algebraically, we're, we're doing 300 equals all that stuff, but I'm going to do this on the graphing calculator. Now, you could probably just as easily solve this by um, algebra, you know, and say 300 equals and then do your, do your thing. This one has a coordinate of 35.236, 300. And this one over here is 8.514, uh, 300. So I'm guessing the dimensions are actually 35 point something by eight point something. Uh, what dimensions would you yield, use to yield? Um, I, if I put either one of those in and then subtract from 43, you can see I'm gonna get the other one. So I'll just say it this way, 8.574 feet by 35.236 feet. All right, uh, what's the practical domain for this problem? Okay, back up to this graph, I'm glad I did the graph. Um, practical domain for this problem is where we kind of care about the, the x-axis. Um, I can't really have negative feet of fence that way, and I can't use beyond 43.75 as a dimension for this fence because then the other dimension is going to be impossible. So it's really where this parabola ends up being positive in the, like sort of quadrant one. So... Yeah, 0 up to 43.75. Do I want to include those endpoints? I don't know. It doesn't seem to have any area at all. I'm going to say this. I want to say the area wants to be in between there. I'm not going to fight you if you want to say those are included. But practical range, if I, I, I has to agree with this. So if it can't be 0 or 43.75, the, the area, the y value cannot be 0. But I do have to include this y value up here, which is the 478 point whatever. That is included. That vertex is within that part of the parabola that I've already just graphed. Okay, an animal corral to be formed by fencing a rectangular area in an open field. The corral must also be split in half by a fence. Okay, so here we're talking about a rectangle. So there's that much fence, but this is also fence um, to separate the cattle from the chickens. They're going to give them the same amount of area. They're not the same size. In okay, anyway, given that you only have 200 feet of fencing, well, let's call this one X, which we've been doing all day. Uh, and then what's left is these other two parts. And the whole thing has to add up to 200. So I can think of this as, well, it's like, well, for now, let's do this. If you get stuck, you can always do this. I know that 2y plus 3x is supposed to be 200. Let's solve this for y, and then we'll just actually use this here rather than rather than using a, uh, another value of x or another variable because it's, it's really going to be harder later. I can't really make a function of x if it has y in it. But just if, if this trips you up, let me just show you how you could do this. Whoops, 200 minus, I'm solving this for y. Sorry, I'm solving this for y. I'm talking and doing things at the same time. Solve that for y. All right, so I have, whoa. Ugh. Try this one more time. Uh, 2y equals two, 200 minus 3x. So I'll divide this by two. Uh, 100 minus 3 halves x, or you could put that whole thing over two. All right, so let's rewrite this. Let's not call this y anymore. Let's call this whole thing, well, I guess I can leave the brace. That's kind of nice. 100 minus 3 halves x, and there's two of those. Okay. Oh, I better pause this for now because someone's going to be using my room. I will continue this in a second. All right, so just as before, we have to make an area equation for the area enclosed by this by these dimensions, which is this. Uh, I'm going to do this on the calculator. And I get this lovely graph. As you might expect, looks something like this. This hits the ground here at 66 and a two thirds. This hits a max at 33 and a third. Whoops, and that much. Um, okay, and the question is, what are the dimensions of the crowd that with 
with the greatest area. So it's the greatest when x is 33 and a third. So x is 33 and a third. And then if I want to find uh, this other dimension, I just plug that. I just plug that in. So I go 33.3 by 50. And this is still feet. Uh, yeah, feet. Okay. Uh, that's it for that page. Next, okay, so I, I mentioned at the beginning that these, uh, a lot of these could be referred to as fence or border problems. Here's the first type of border problem where um, we have a limited outside area. This is the paper that we're dealing with. And then from that on the inside, we are going to, we're going to uh, have a uniform border around the, the page that kind of comes in. So if that uniform width is going to be X, we need to express the area of the inside. Oh, I didn't do the outside dimensions. This is eight and a half, and this is of course 11. So the dimensions that are left over on the inside, this part is 8.5 minus 2x, if you think about it, because I have to take out x on both sides. And the height on this direction is, sorry, I think I hit the pause button. It's 11 minus 2x on that dimension. Okay, so the area, sorry that gets so small when I zoom out like that, like that. Um, Area based on x is going to be 8.5 minus 2x times 11 minus 2x. Um, if we put 3 in for that, we're just finding this product here. 11 minus 2 times 3, and that is, and that's 12.5, and this is, yeah, square inches. And if they want the area to be 56 inches, I'm essentially solving this. Um, and I haven't been doing it this way every single time. So I thought I'd try it this way just so you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, I'm trying to solve that. And, you know, for algebra's sake, I could do that by expanding this whole thing. This turns out to be 4x squared minus 39x plus 93.5. I could subtract 56 on both sides. And that would give me uh, 4x squared minus 39x plus 37.5, I could put this in quadratic formula, I could figure it out, or if I have this in a graph, I think it could be a little bit more valuable. Uh, the graph of this, I might have room up here, I'll put it here. The graph of these kind of border, pro or, yeah, border problems look like that generally. Um, we have a positive coefficient for A, so they're gonna open up. This is 4.25. The parabola does eventually come back up here, but it doesn't make any sense. Uh, we can talk about that in class, but um, yeah, that's, that's gonna be kind of silly. So we're gonna stop at 4.25. It's going to start up here at 93.5 because that's the area of the paper without any border taken out at all. Uh, anyway, the question was, I, we want this area to be 56. So if I was to draw a horizontal line there, I could solve for this intersection. And that turns out to be 1.082 comma 56. So the question was, yeah, uh, 1.082. Now, no, notice if you were to do this in... Um, quadratic formula, you would get two answers. You get this other part of a parabola over here, there'd be this other crazy answer. But if you look back at the problem, that border would be so wide, it would go beyond halfway in the in the paper, and it wouldn't make any sense. We, we, we've dipped through this area of the negative area. Actually, I think by this point, we have borders that are wider than the whole page, and it makes zero sense at all. We get these huge areas that go off to infinity, but that's not actually possible. The realm of possibility stops here when we get to 4.25, so please remember that. Okay, last page. Uh, this is the other type of border problems where we have a fixed area in the middle and the borders are gonna, gonna go out like that. So um, yeah, let's put the dimensions on here. All right, so this is already starting out as 16 by 12. We're building on X kind of in every direction like this. All right, total dimensions of here. This is gonna be 12 plus 2X and this one's going to be 16 plus 2X. So the area is as follows. Great, and you can expand that and make a standard equation out if you want to. I, there's no need to, you can, you can leave it just like this, which is not any technical named form of a, of a parabola equation that we have at all. Um, this is just plug four in on part C here. So I'm just putting four into the equation. This is 20 times 24, which is 480. Did that without a calculator. Hope that's right. And 
if you have 350 square feet total, I want the total area to be 350. Solve this for x. I think, again, I think I'm going to do this with, um, with a graph. I think the graph really helps visualize what's going on. So let me draw a graph. Now on these types of graphs, or these types of problems where the area starts out pretty big and just gets bigger, the parabola looks kind of like this. Nothing over here in the parabola graph makes any kinds of sense at all. This technically goes up uh, to infinity. Uh, if you can think about that, like this border can go on forever. If we have a little tiny garden in the middle of, you know, a paved country or something like that, like it's really kind of ridiculous. But so practical domain is really hard to talk about in this. Like what is the, what is the, what the overall kind of limit of how far you want to build this border. Anyway, oh, it's garden. I'm going to make it green. Uh, I really want to figure out where does this, where does this intersect the line y equals 350. Uh, and on my calculator, it says that that happens at 2.407. Uh, so that's it. Oh, wait. So, yeah, what, what should make the walkway? That's right. 2.407 feet. And is that it? I think that's it. Okay, I will see you in class.